Yeah. <laughs> it should all be easy. Woo, we are live. Hey, speaking of it should all be easy. Uh, we have here Robert from Helium Systems, uh, which is an awesome IoT platform. Um, and do you want to tell me a bit about what that is? So we design IoT network infrastructure. We make gateways and then in radio modules. And those connect to each other and to any MCU board you can find. We have dev kits, which come with like uh, headers for Arduinos, right? Little Makes it easy there. for development. And you it's can use those to <laughs> connect sensors to MCUs and then use our radio module and transmit your sensor data to our gateway, which transmits it to a cloud platform. We have really nice data channels that are able to route your data quickly to any endpoint that you like or your own channel. Uh -huh. It doesn't have to be a, a commonly used cloud provider. It could be anything that you make, but you just identify the headers and our dashboard, which everyone should go check out. And uh, we're going to look at that in just a second. Create connected devices. Awesome. So when you put all those things together, you get this, which yes. looks kind of like a bug and is fantastic. This has a really crazy range on it, didn't you say? Like yeah, so this, the one that we're using, I mean, several several city blocks. In, city, in, in the city, lots of interference, uh -huh. right? So line of sight, you know. But if you're going ac across, for example, should we, should uh, we tell about the secret? Not that yet, okay. but <laughs> it is very far. Very, very far. Like there's, water distances across across bays. There's a lot of secret cool stuff that's coming up that you should totally stay tuned about. Right. Uh, as you may notice, there are some flashing lights on this doohickey. They're there for a reason. Uh, it's because we just spent like an hour setting up uh, the, the Ethernet thingy. Our fault. Our router is on the ceiling. It's a problem. Uh, we had to dig out a ladder and everything. But let's take a look at what we actually did here. So, well, first off, here is the Helium store where you can look at what we're using here. Uh, we're using the Ethernet starter kit, which is, includes this access point. What do you call those again? The element. Element. Haha, <laughs> super cool. Uh, and then there's a cellular one as well, which is not what we're using. Uh, the prototyping module, which uh, gets plugged into the Arduino shield. There's also a Raspberry Pi hat and one for Atom to USB, which is pretty cool. And this guy is just like what's included on the little radio module, right? Yeah, that's the service mount part. So if you were a company looking to embed this into your production item, you just go order lots of those and include it into your uh, PCB. So you can mass produce them if you wish. Super cool. Uh, and then we're using this Ethernet kit. So what we just did was basically follow this Arduino guide. Uh, I mean, if I had done it, I would have followed the Arduino guy, but you yeah. just can do it from memory. Uh, if you all look, there's plenty of great documentation on the website, which is helium.com. Uh, and we'll be doing a quick project on how to get that up and running as well. Uh, it should be out next Monday for MCU Monday, but it may be a week or two. We'll see. <laughs> Stay tuned, uh, as always. Uh, and then you'll notice that we come to this part where you're in, uh, registering stuff in the dashboard. You use the MAC addresses of these devices, right, to register? Yeah. Super cool. Uh, and let's take a look at that dashboard. Yeah, so there's data being transmitted from the atom we have here, and you designate it by, on your dashboard, just go to the top of the dashboard. All right, so getting started, you can register atoms, elements, create channels. So just hit the plus button. You can add the atom with its MAC address. And then you go and add, add an element, plug it all in. And once you run the sample code that's provided to you, it will automatically connect and route to a data channel, which we have pre-configured channels for Azure, AWS, Google, or our own MQTT channel, which is good oh, for cool. testing. It's the default channel. And you will see it here. Ah, data at the channel. Showed you how many bytes it is. Cool. What the RSSI was. And yeah. that's the signal strength, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can, and you can look at this by each individual atom. You know. Neat. And then see what the element. You data. just brought over two of these atoms. I can't wait to see what you can do with two of them. Yeah. Super cool. So you can, in your cloud application, you could 
really when you're in the clouds, you can kind of design and build whatever you want at that point, <laughs> right? Yeah. So you can have them communicate to each other if you if you wanted to. These atoms have uh, configuration variables, which are just like saved addresses of memory, and you can update them uh, from the cloud and send new updates to uh, your device. So you would just add in the dashboard, you can add configuration variables. You can also add them through like cloud services, uh -huh. and they're, they're separate. So these are like global, where it would change everything, no matter right. what. And like, so we have sleep seconds here, you could call it the, the key would be interval and the time would be one, like a second. And it would sleep, that's the transmission time that it would change. And you can update these from here, you can update them from the cloud. So having two atoms, you can make them work together. It's pretty cool. Super cool. Uh, there was something else I wanted to see. Oh yeah, the fact that you can tag them is pretty cool because there's a lot of uh, listed applications that you kind of have on your site. Like clearly, this is designed for like large scale networks. It can handle. You said hundreds, maybe thousands. Yeah. So it's depending on your data rate, you and how much. So like how much data you're sending, how many channel or channels are available for something to transmit and receive on. I mean, it's very easy to scale this to very large numbers and you want to be able to tag them and put them into groups, uh, different channels. So being organized is pretty important and we try to give you as much organizational tools or as many organizational tools as possible in the dashboard. Super cool. Uh, and there's a couple of other solutions that you've already got on Hackster, which is pretty neat. There's this GPS tracking one uh, that tracks whatever you have. You can do asset tracking with it, you can do people mm -hmm. tracking, smart vehicles, whatnot. Yeah, so we have three projects up on Hexter, I think, mm -hmm. right now. One's so the GPS tracking one, we have the soil moisture sensor, mm -hmm. and then we have the uh, desk utilization or like people counting, essentially, which uses a more involved sensor on the Raspberry Pi and some embedded CV so that you can pick objects out of a uh, it's a eight by eight infrared array, so wow, that those are fun. That's and super cool. So you, you can find that from any of these projects as well. You can also just go to hackster.io/helium, uh, where you can see all the projects. Uh, you can also search for these individually. People counting. I won't click yeah. on that one because it'll give me this whole huge like thing at the top, which is awkward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, so uh, again with the sort of industrial applications, you talked about how you have a lot of really cool things for, uh, you consider security a very high priority, which is awesome. IoT security, very important. Yeah. What kind of stuff do you have going on? There? So there's two layers of security here. There's a hardware security, which is, uh, so we have an actual uh, ECC chip, which is exchanging keys between the gateways and the atoms. Mm -hmm. So the elements in the atoms can verify that they are so this real. So I'm talking to yes. our, our router plugged in right. uh, element so, guy. Yeah, so if you were trying to send mm -hmm. data down to an atom or you were trying to send something to your element, there would be no way to intercept that without having the keys that are in the hardware architecture. Also, there's a software layer of encryption. Uh -huh. so you can feel very safe about your data going from any sensor to your cloud endpoint. Cool, and even you don't know the no, hardware I don't, ones. No, I don't, yeah. So those keys, once we've baked them, they are there and we don't know what they are. Super cool. Well, neat. Uh, this is not by all means, uh, or by any means, all that there is to know about Helium. Uh, and I don't want to give away too much, but we're going to have some really cool news coming up with this platform in the near future. So, uh, you know, stay tuned. Uh, if you're curious, you could always get one now and start messing around with it, see what it's like. Uh, and yeah, y'all you're, you're are based in San Francisco too, right? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> That's all I can really say. Thank you so much, Robert, for coming in. This Thank is you. so cool. Uh, yeah, have an awesome rest of your Wednesday. And you guys too, have an awesome rest of your Wednesday. We'll see you soon uh, with some awesome beginner projects for this. Have an awesome one. Ciao. <laughs>